Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we also like to wel welcome those who are watching us via live stream. As we always say, you may not be here with us in person, but you are with us in spirit. As always, before we begin, we like to acknowledge important events in people's lives. So is there anybody celebrating a birthday today or this week? Go ahead. It's coming Wednesday. Happy birthday. Go ahead. Thursday. Happy birthday. So we got one age and one not. We won't even say it. Happy birthday to both of you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Lisa. Her sister's birthday is October 25th. October 25th. Happy birthday. We'll go with that. Happy birthday. <laughs> a lot of birthdays. Anybody else? How about an anniversary today or this week? We ran them all out on the birthdays. Today we pray for Carol Bartellamy, Carol Mills, for Sylvia Wilcox, Molly, Sue, Gina, and so many others recovering from strokes for their families, may healing and strength be theirs. For so many in our church and beyond, they ask for God's healing. And again, we say this all the time, but they ask for not just God's prayers, but these people are asking for our prayers for them to intercede with God for them. So each name, like I said, has a story. So we pray for these people. Today, that list includes Mary, Bill, and Vincent. For Philip, Jerry, Victor, and Joel, for Julie, Kathy, Rick, for Anna, for Tom, Eric Dunkel, who's struggling with cancer, a good friend of mine, uh, Lisa, Hannah, Sandy, for Alan, Elaine Hansen, for Michael, for Connie Goulash, Barb, Amy, for Larry Kaminsky, for Jean, for Christine, for Tony, Sherry, for little Silas, and baby Hudson in ICU. For Jean, David, Keith, for Jim, Karen, Joyce Sr., for Judy, Paul, and John, and for Miles, for Bill Bruner, for Lisa, and for Cindy. And today we also pray for Mary Ann Lipsky, who passed away this morning. We offer these prayers and the prayers we hold deep within our own hearts and present them before the Lord today. At this time, I ask you to please stand and greet your neighbor as you wish.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gathered together for our Eucharist once again, we gather to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God loved us first, and our God is so deeply in love with us. And so once again, let us pause and ponder our week. What have we done? What is the brokenness that we can bring before our Lord? What is the healing that we need from our God, from Jesus? In the power of the Holy Spirit, let's pause and pray God's pardon and God's mercy. Lord Jesus, we gather together to hear your words of wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring healing to a world in distress. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you open our eyes to see the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us sing God's praises. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us so love what you command that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated yet again to be nourished by God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, The Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, 
I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those of his child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and the erring, for he himself is beset by weaknesses, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself, as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God. Just as Aaron was, in the same way it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Achizedek. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples in a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, 
Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. So good afternoon again. So back some years ago when I was a young teenager, quite a few years ago, I was very nearsighted. In other words, everything in the distance was kind of fuzzy and blurry. And I was okay with that because that's kind of how I lived my whole life already. But then I kept complaining to my parents that I always had to sit up toward the front of class, being the introvert that I am, and the only way I could watch the teacher right on the chalkboard. Remember those things, the chalkboard? So my parents decided to do something about it and help me. So they got me an eye exam and a pair of glasses. So this was back in the late 60s, kind of low tech back then. And the glasses I got were these big, ugly, black plastic things with thick lenses. I hated them. I really did. I hated them. And every time I wore them, I always thought to myself, I felt like a cross between Poindexter and Charlie Brown. I finally threw them in a drawer, and I never wore them again. I was okay with that because, like I said, I was used to seeing everything fuzzy and blurry anyway. About seven, eight years later, when I was around 20 years old, I was in the military, I decided I really wanted to start seeing things a little more clear. So I went out and got myself a pair of prescription glasses. I can't even begin to tell you the incredible feeling the first time I drove that I was actually able to see road signs and not guess of what they were saying. That used to make it a lot of fun. And I could see the sunrises and the sunsets and the boats on the water. It was all so clear. I could see the world for what it was. So just think. If I felt like that, going from fuzzy vision to clear, just imagine what it's like to go from being completely blind and just like that, being able to see. That must be an incredible feeling. And yet we just heard that happen in our gospel reading today, didn't we? It starts off with a blind man named Bartimaeus. And he's sitting alongside the road. He's begging, probably for food, money, anything else to help him survive. And then here comes Jesus and his followers walking on by. Well, Jesus, I think by that time, has made a pretty good impression. He's been going out. He's been teaching people, casting out demons, miracles. There's a lot of great news surrounding Jesus. He's made a pretty big name for himself, so much that I think even Bartimaeus has heard about him. So what does Bartimaeus do? He starts begging Jesus. But he's not begging just for money or food, is he? Goes way beyond that. Bartimaeus is going for the big prize. And what is the big prize? We just heard that, didn't we? In the Gospel. I quote, Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. And just like that, we hear Jesus say, 
Again, I quote, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed him on the way. Now, personally, I think what we're really hearing here, that last verse, says everything about that whole gospel reading, about what's really happening here. And what is that? Think about it. I'll say it again. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. In other words, not only did Bartimaeus receive his eyesight, but he became a believer and a follower of Jesus. He began to see Jesus spiritually, see him spiritually for who he really was. And what does that gospel reading mean for us here in our lives today? Maybe it's this. How often in our lives are you like just I like I was when I was a young teenager? Where everything in our world just seems kind of fuzzy and blurry as we walk through life? And we stumble and bumble along, not really knowing where we're going or seeing what we're doing. How often is life like that? Or even worse, how often is our life like Bartimaeus? Where we live in darkness and we're fearful of all those things happening around us, of life, of sorrow, grief. It can be pretty easy to happen, can't it? I mean, look what's happening in the world. The disparity of wealth between the haves and the have-nots. It's incredible. How much anger and fighting amongst ourselves these days, many times caused by people we don't even know. It's created divisions in families and friends. Really? And look at our world, the conflict. Not just the world, in our country. The hurting of people, the killing here around the world, and it seems to get worse every day. It's pretty depressing, isn't it? And yet I think the worst part is this that even though we can see what's happening in our physical world, I'm pretty sure that many of us, if not most of us here, are just like me here today. That we look at the world and everything that's going on, and it feels like there's not a darn thing we can do about it. I wonder if that's what it was like with Bartimaeus also. See, I think Bartimaeus, in a sense, represents all of us here. At least he represents all of us here till we truly come to believe and follow Jesus. See, because like what Jesus did with Bartimaeus, he does for us. He opens our eyes and helps us to see. He helps us to see the truth for what it really is. Jesus is our rock that helps us to endure all that we will go through in our lives. Best of all, Jesus is there to help us make our world a better place, but we have to do our part. I'll close with this. When Jesus said to Bartimaeus, go your way, your faith has saved you. Personally, I always wonder, was was Bartimaeus actually able to see physically or was it spiritually? I like to think both. Yet I also wonder, if we ask Bartimaeus, which of those two 
were more important to him that very day, I wonder what he would say. In the long run, I think Bartimaeus would tell us that seeing Jesus spiritually is far more important than here. And finally, like Bartimaeus, I think when we finally come to believe and follow Jesus, it would be like getting a good pair of eyeglasses. Where we come to see the world as Jesus did, with love, with compassion. Think about that. We'll come to see the world as Jesus did, with love and compassion. So maybe today, this is a good time to ask God this question. Master, I want to see. I want to see the world for what it really is. Let us rise once more, profess our faith, and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who at the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. To you, good and gracious God, we turn once more this day, for you have the words of everlasting life. Hear us, we pray. For all called to lead the church, that they guide the faithful in the way of love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those in authority who administer health care, that they may serve with compassion, especially for the young and the elderly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all those blinded by fear or prejudice, that their eyes may be opened, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick and for their caregivers, that they may be healed and strengthened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God touch the hearts of our youth and young adults to lead them to lives of service and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this assembly, that they may seek the Lord as fearlessly as the son of Timaeus. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, in particular this afternoon, for Eugene and Marjorie Oswald. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we turn to you once more, for you truly rescue us, you save us, you guide us, you sustain us. May we know, O oh Lord, that faith is truly a gift, a graced gift by the power of the Holy Spirit. May our hearts be open to you to guide us and to sustain us all our days, we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us be seated once more as our sacred altar table is clothed and prepared. Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. For the praise and glory of His name, for the good of all the Holy Church. 
Lord, we pray that you look on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies, faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a, became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the whole world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name. We join the hymn of your glory as without end and sing. You, therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. When we ourselves had turned away from you, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, why we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating this great gift that Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, <clears throat> whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you, accept us together with your Son, 
and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Thomas, and with all the saints, and yes, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us rise, for it is at the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave with you my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word 
and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Before we part, uh, just a few things to share with you. Um, it's hard to believe, but uh, next Friday uh, is the Feast of All Saints, and that would be November 1st. Um, you can tell the shadows are already starting um, to grow. So it's the Feast of All Saints. Uh, Holy Day, I, there'll be liturgy masses at 9 and 6.30. I think those things are going to be in the bulletin. So 9 and 6.30 on Thursday. November 2nd, we remember all those who have gone before us marked with a sign of faith and are now at rest. So again, if you will, All Souls Day, we will celebrate that. The month of November, we remember the dead. We remember those who are living in Christ. And so on November the 4th, that's Monday, here at 6.30, um, we will have that, that prayer, that liturgy, where we remember the service of lights and we remember those who have gone before us, all the saints, our loved ones. And so you're all welcome, the people are welcome to come. It's not by invitation. And that's at 6.30. And we will have the reading of the names and, of course, um, the lighting of the candles in memory of those that we love. Deacon Steve and I will preside at this liturgy. So uh, please uh, come, uh, if you will. And you're lucky tonight because I left a sheet with all the other announcements in the office. <laughs> That's the truth. So are there young people ages 3 to 12 that would sit with me at the step just for a moment? go far you're gonna take and you're good too you are you really are that's why I'm speaking really softly and gently I used to have hair like you <laughs> do you know the beautiful thing the beautiful thing is to be able to see the colors of our world to see on the outside but yes yeah, my microphone and to see with Jesus eyes and Bartimaeus, the man in the gospel, he said, Jesus, what did he do? He called him. He said, call him. So he called him. Now, he was in Jericho, the city of sin. He called him. And everybody in the world, he could finally understand. And he said, Jesus, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't stop. They kept telling him to be quiet, but he wouldn't be quiet. Because mm -mm. he wanted to see. And that's what Jesus is going to ask you and you, and you, and you, and you. What do you want? What do you want? What are you going to answer Jesus when he asks you? What do you want? So you know what I'm hoping? That the Holy Spirit is, is like a dove, a bird, that you live like the Spirit, you be like the Holy Spirit, and you speak like the Holy Spirit, like the white dove. I hope you do that. Someone gave me that to say to you. And I was glad to do it. We love you. Never forget how much. Oh, I won't forget any of you. I promise. You are so special. That's for you. I bet you're wondering. That's for you. Whoops. You're just learning fine motor skills. And that's for you. Thank you so much for coming to the step. Thank you. You're very special. You are welcome. Well, they're kind of content right now. We pray for mom and dad, too. <laughs> Times two, we do. Everyone with twins, we pray for. Sacred Assembly, let us rise. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. 
Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And then the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.